Hello everyone. Today we will explain basic functions of Photoshop timeline. First we open Photoshop. Create a new file. Then go to the window menu and find the timeline. There are two options below the timeline. One is to create a frame animation. One is to create a video timeline. Frame animation is beyond the scope of our discussion. We create the video timeline using. We click to create a video timeline. This way we create a video timeline. You can zoom in and out of the timeline here. You can drag here to zoom in or out. After zooming in on this timeline, we can see that. It automatically creates a 5 second video timeline for us. This is the play button. This pointer represents the moment of the current video. Where does the pointer stop? Then the current video is at that moment. This returns the first frame. This is the next frame. This is the previous frame. This is the audio switch. This is the playback setting. Here is the division. You can cut a timeline into two segments. This is the position animation switch. This is the transparency animation switch. This is the style animation switch. Below this is the audio settings bar. This is the timeline menu. Everyone can experience the commands inside by themselves. Let's look at the relationship between layers and the timeline. Let's create a new layer. We now create three new layers. When we create a new layer, it will be based on the current pointer position. For us backwards, automatically create a 5 second timeline. We adjust their positions. Then let's look at the layers panel. When we move layer 3 below layer 2, we can see on the timeline. Timeline track for layer 3. Automatically moved below the timeline track of layer 2. Let's move further down. It will move under the track of layer 1 again. We can pass. Drag both sides of the timeline to adjust the length of the timeline. For example, let's adjust these three timelines like this now. When using other video editing software, you can put all different materials into one track. But in Photoshop, we don't recommend this, because if we put it inside a track, when we open it and watch it, it forms a video group. But the animation switch in this video group, position, opacity and style, will only work on the original timeline of this layer does not work on timelines of other layers, will not work on layer 1 and layer 2. So we recommend not to use this method as much as possible. We still have to give each timeline a separate track. This way we can adjust each track individually. Then we restore them. Now we are on layer 3. Make a position animation. Make a fill color block on layer 3. Then turn on the position switch. It is automatically at the pointer's position. Created a keyframe. Let's drag the pointer to another point in time. Then we move layer 3. The position of this color block. It automatically creates a keyframe at the pointer position. Repeat the same operation. You can create multiple displacement animations. We drag the pointer back to the starting point. Let's look at layer 2. We are on layer 2. Also create a color block. Use another color. Then turn on the opacity switch. This way he automatically creates a keyframe.
We set the opacity to zero here on the layer. And then we move here. Set opacity to 100. Then repeat the operation just now. Then let's look at its final effect. Let's open layer 1 again. Let's add another color block to layer 1. Then we turn on the style switch. It automatically creates a keyframe at the pointer position. We can delete this keyframe using the delete key. All keyframes can be deleted. You can delete it as soon as you select it. We now add a style to layer 1. Add a color overlay. Add a yellow color to it. Then turn the style switch back on. Move here. Then change its color overlay to Ray. This way we get another keyframe. Move here. Choose another color for him. Move here again. Double click on this logo. At last, add one more. This creates a color changing animation. Let's play it. So we can see the effect of it. We can also hold down the CTRL key and select several keyframes. At the same time, select these three key keys at the same time. Right click on one of them. Then click copy. Right click again. Click to paste. It will start at the position of the pointer. Taste the three keyframes we copied just now. We can see its effect by playing it. That is to say, these three keyframes we have now, these are the three keyframes we just copied. This is it. Basic operations of animation using Photoshop. When our animation is completed, Rendering videos can be found in this menu. You can also find the rendered video in the file menu. Click on this rendering video. Generally, we use H264. Then, select Desktop. Let's play this video. This is the basic process of making animations with Photoshop. That's it for today. Goodbye.